यस बेटा गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन क्या समक्ष उज्जवल सक्षम यस मिठुन साक्षी उज्जवल सो हाउ इज लाइफ इट्स गोइंग एवरीथिंग फाइन सबने अपने वीडियोस वगैरह देख लिए बेटा यस अभी गॉन थ्रू द वीडियोस ग्रेट तो फंक्शन सिम्स टू बी इजी और काफी इंटरेस्टिंग है इट्स सिम्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग राइट मिठुन व्हाट डू यू से व्हिच वेल सो देयर आर लॉट मेनी थिंग्स इन फंक्शन ना सो आई यू नो यू we'll we'll be doing more 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 videos on that like right, afterwards right uh we'll have a function too where we'll we'll discuss the questions which are based on uh you know this uh, concept right functions function two which will be you know covering maybe uh, we have we have done class 12th also in that uh, module uh, whatever the videos i have done i have given you the idea of the inverse functions i have given you the function of the idea of one one on two functions doesn't it so everything is in class 12th but initially in class 11th the function is very less the topic is very less okay but we have uh, gone to a higher level now i mean to the next level okay so in function 2 we will we'll start with the things we'll do uh, you know uh, not many questions based on that okay and uh, we'll make sure that you know you understand the concepts more easily okay don't worry so how was the how was the test i mean on sunday the test was which one you did good yeah you did very good right mitun saksham samaksh you have given the exam yes everyone is it right great so it was a very easy paper just we are, we are giving a very mediocre paper i'm not in maths i'm giving the questions which are of not very high level and not right so uh, now maybe will be i'll i'm thinking of giving more tougher and tougher questions okay right abhi yes good evening bhavil right okay so uh, that way if you see uh, surely will be you know raising the level of the questions so first we are trying to you know see whether you people are trying to attempt those questions which are given there or not right okay
fine so uh, i think uh, we have started with the function part so uh, we'll do function continue with function maybe next class is also a function so i would suggest that you go through the videos so uh, have you gone through the module with everyone have you gone through the module is it yes good evening himank have you gone through the video have you gone through the module yes good evening mahesh module whatever books have been sent you have gone through it in the topic function have you gone through it okay fine so much everyone right now you have understood uh, next month uh, we can have a school school doubt session surely with we can no problem you can bring the questions surely so much says sir i have some test doubts test doubts okay so much you have some test doubts right let me see okay so okay you have an exam right 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 okay fine fine if you have any doubts we can always discuss in that no problem we can bring it in the you know on the the whatsapp forum also no issues right okay so you can ask your doubts in the whatsapp group also okay so first uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, take the doubts uh, of uh, you know the test okay everyone right then we'll come to the doubts of functions and then we'll continue with the topic function right which topic avi which are the topics which are coming in the examination in your school which are the topics which are coming in the examination in school close to 15 chapters all the chapters which are coming in the exam okay okay right 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 that's great good fine okay so we'll start with the uh, you know uh, let's have uh, ayush has also joined so you have question number 1 you have question number 3 question number 6 question number 11 lot many doubts you have you are having a linear programming in your school for question number 30 question number 29 so all all our doubts so much have you tried these questions no question number 1 uh, question number 1 is also doubt okay let's have let's have a look at it now first one everyone just have a look at it i plus i square right i cube 
I4 plus 2, 100 terms. B is equal to, right? So if you were, uh, uh, I didn't know wrong few I did. Uh, few were, were not attempted as I didn't know how to go about it, right? That is what you are saying. If you are wrong. So I so much I, I will suggest that you do the uh, do you have the paper with you? Do you have the paper with you? I to the power 40 plus 1 upon I to the power 39, right? This is one question, fine. Yeah. Okay. We have C is equal to 1 plus I square I4. This is I6 plus I. So I think this questions first you give a try. Let me let me share the paper along. Uh, right. Okay. Let me share the paper in the group itself. Okay. So I think that will give you a very clear picture. So here also we can use GP here. This is GP basically, right? Isn't it? This is GP, no? Fine. Here also we have I to the power 40. So I to the power 40 means we are talking about I raised to the power 40 is I raised to the power, you know, 4 raised to the power 10. So that comes out to be 1, right? 1 upon I raised to the power 39 into I denote by I, I divided by I raised to the power 40, which is I, right? Okay, so this is one, this is I, fine. So I think this, this you can, this you can do it like this way. What I, uh, this is I plus one, I plus one, right? Right, so much. Then we have i plus i square plus i q plus i to the power 4 plus dot 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 plus 100 terms. So this is basically a GP, isn't it? This is a GP we need to find. So GP means we are talking about A, iota, iota raised to the power 100 minus 1 divided by iota minus 1. Okay, this is how it goes. Fine. Right, Sanjay? Good evening, better. Okay, everyone? Here also we have the same thing, is it? It's a, it's a, it's a GP, right? Iota square minus one iota square. Number of terms is how much? Minus one. So how many terms are there? How many? Thirty-one, right? So we have thirty-one terms. Uh, sorry, uh, how many terms we have? Fifteen plus one, sixteen terms, isn't it? Right? Okay. Fine. So much. So I hope this is clear to everyone. Question number one, there was a doubt. We need to find A plus B plus C, right? We need to find A plus B plus C. Okay, this is how it goes, right? Right, Samaksh? So this is one question. So I I I uh, I let me take uh, you know the one question which was like I think uh, everyone might have given the answer. This is eighty six. There was a question. Let me take the twenty six one, right? So let me write the question on the board, and I want you people to try this one. Fine. The sum of few terms of any series, right? Of any series, right, Sanjay? Just have a look at it. Of any series and any ratio series, right? Ratio series means we are talking about geometric series, right? Is 7 to 8. This is one question. It's a very interesting question. 7 to 8, right? If the common ratio is three, if the common ratio 
is 3. And the last term last term is 486, right? 486. Then you have to find the first term. Then find the first term, okay? This is the question. First term, we need to find, okay? We need to find the first term, right? The sum of the few terms of in series, ratio series is 7 to 8. If the common ratio is 3, and the last term is 486, then you have to find the first term, okay? Right. Find the first. This is the problem you have. Ratio series means we are talking about geometric progression. Okay. We are talking about geometric progression. Some of the few terms of any series ratio is 7 to 8. If the common ratio is 3 and the last term is 486, right? This is a very interesting sum rules we can have. Uh, you can just have a look at it. Sanjay, everyone, Samaj, yes, Mithun. Okay. This is one question. All other questions, I think we have now, we have gone through these questions in the in the you know last part of your course, I mean in the previous part of your course. Trigonometry, we have done few questions. I mean complex numbers, we have done questions. Trigonometry also we have done lot many same type of questions. So I don't think so there will be any problem. Okay, very simple paper I have given. So you need to understand that. Okay. Some of the first few few terms of any series, ratio series is seven to eight. If the common ratio is 3 and the last term is 486, then you have to find the first term, right? Then you have to find the first term. So what can be done? Any one of you can tell me what can be done? <coughs> yes. Sum to n terms is 7 to 8 students, right? Such 7 to 8. Okay, this is 2. Okay, let us see. So sum to 8 n terms is this, right? So that means we are talking about e raised to the power. A is 3 to the power n, right? Minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. And this is 7 to 8, fine. This is how it goes, okay? Right? And the last term is, last term is, A, R to the power, you know, we, what we have? Common issue is here, the last term is also given to us, isn't it? So this is basically we are talking about n minus 1 is equal to 4 and 6, right? I hope this is clear to everyone. Is this fine? Okay. Right. Or A, this is 3 raised to the power n minus 1, isn't it? Which is 4 into 6, fine? Right, Ravisha, is this clear so much? So A... 3 raised to the power n into 3 raised to the power minus 1, which is equal to 486. So a 3 to the power n, right? And 486 divided by 3 to the power minus 1 would becomes 486 into 3, right? This is how it goes, is it? Everyone, can I have a confirmation, please? Right? Yes. Is this clear? Right. So how can you substitute here? Basically, this can be written as a into 3 to the power n, right? This is minus a divided by 2 is equal to 7 to 8, isn't it? So here what we can take, we can just, you know, we can substitute the values, right? Which is nothing but what? 486 
into 3, isn't it? The whole value. And we can cross multiply. I think A will be 2 then, right? So I hope this is question number 26 is clear to everyone. Yes, let me know, beta. Everyone. Question number 26. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Aprajit, yes, Bache. Sakshi, everyone. Question number 26. Mithun, Saksham, Sakshi, Samaj, Abhi, Mahesh, Himank, Ayush, Bhavil, Sanjay, Ravisha. Yes, Jai Kishan, Ujjwal, Sumit, fine beta, Aprajit, Pragati. This is okay? Great. Okay. You don't have the question paper, beta? Surely, I, I will share it on the group then. Okay, we? I will share it in the group. Fine. Right. I will share it in the group. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, you, anyone has shared it on the group or is it? No. I think this. these are the questions which... Uh, Achha, the Pali ma'am shared the code. Okay, that's great. 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 Very nice. Very nice. Right, Abhi? So you can just check it on your group. Uh, and oh, you have currently uninstalled the WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can, you can, you can, uh, if you need it, you can message me personally. I will, I will send you the paper. Okay. From any other number. Right. And just write below that I'm Abhi from Freeplan. BMC classes. Okay, I will share it with you. Don't worry. Fine. Okay, so I think these are the questions which were a bit tricky. One tricky in the sense, not so tricky. Uh, question paper is very, very easy actually. Right. Okay. Fine, everyone. Shall I go to the next part? Yes, yeah, section. Everyone, let me know. So because few students might have not given the exam, so need to be very, very careful in this, okay? Right, everyone? Saksham, is this okay? Other questions seems to be very easy and we have done all these questions. Yes, I think Ujwal has scored the best. Ujwal has scored the maximum, right? Right, everyone? Is this clear? Okay. So, uh, shall we, uh, Saksham, I think we can we can just go through the questions again. You can go through the questions, all the questions we have done. I mean, that's why I'm not repeating the questions. Very simple questions, right? Okay. So, uh, shall I go with the function now? Everyone, can I get a confirmation from all of you? Yes, let me know. Everyone, fine. Okay. Right. So uh, I think uh, we have we have gone through uh, uh, you know different uh, functions. We have gone through. Uh, now let me know if you have any you know till now whatever the videos have been published, right? Any anything you need to you need to understand or you need to discuss, right? Any any of the topic. Any one of you, tell me. Yes, let me know. Any of it. Any, any, anything you want to ask? See, when you talk about function, my dear student, we have discussed what is a function and we have discussed what is domain in which. Now, there was a question which was asked yesterday by Saksham in the group that, sir, is the, what is an odd function and what is an even function, right? This is, uh, this was there, right? Isn't it? Right, section. You have a question, very nice question, section. And I said, 
is the odd function even function or one one function or on two function first of all let's have a look at different types of functions right have you gone through uh, different types of functions beta you know okay sanjay you are a newcomer so you have not attended the class no have you have you attended the videos have you gone through the videos beta have you go, have you attended the videos no have you seen any video of function till now no so what are the videos you have seen no videos have been published in your id no videos have been published okay no problem no problem let's understand let's understand this for oh, you saw physics on <laughs> okay okay just go through the uh, maths part also okay right so when you have an odd function students we have a even function right right we have odd function and we have even function let's understand these two functions first right there was a doubt yesterday so let's understand right sanjay let's let's have a look at it let's make it very clear so when you talk about odd function students if you if you have seen the video it is given that f of minus x is equal to minus of fx right if it is an odd function right it is an odd function okay so when you talk about odd functions what does it mean what does it mean we have the origin we have the first we have the second quadrant we have the third quadrant we have the fourth quadrant right so let's understand when you have when you have a function which is odd which is odd odd function means we are talking about f of minus x is minus of fx right so that means if i take an example say i take an example sin x sin x means we are talking about this right this is sin x, isn't it? Can you see that? This sin x. It goes like this. Fine. Right? It goes like this. Can you see that? Right? Everyone? Okay? So this is sin x, isn't it? So when you talk about sin x, students, when you have f of minus x is, you know, minus of fx, what does it mean? That means we are talking about Suppose, you know, I have been given, you know, minus pi by 2, right? And I have been given, you know, pi by 2. Let's understand this part, fine? So when you talk about f of minus pi by 2, f of minus pi by 2, what does it mean? It means, what is the value? What is, what is you know, sine of minus pi by 2? Any one of you can tell me? Yes, what is the value of sine minus pi by 2? Anyone can tell me? This is, this is, you know, Sanjay, this is minus one, right, Pragati? Is this clear? Everyone? Fine? Yes. Every student. Let me know. It is minus one? Fine? Okay. What is f of pi by two? f of pi by two is one. Can you see that? So that means we are talking about f of minus pi by two is equal to minus of f of pi by 2, isn't it? This is how it goes. Minus 1 is equal to, you know, minus 1, right? You understand? So all the values, whenever we talk about this function, it goes like this. You know, we'll get the negative value, right? Whenever, you know, we, we get all the values in f of pi by 2 is fine. Pi by 2 is 1, minus 1. So minus 1 is equal to minus 1. Can you see that? So that is why this function is what? This function is? This function is odd function. So the most important part of odd function is what is the quality? What is the characteristic of odd function is uh, of odd function is right? We have, you know, it always it is always symmetric about the opposite quadrants, right? Right. Always symmetric about the opposite quadrant. Can you see that? Right, always symmetric about the opposite quadrants. 
isn't it? This is happening. So that means we are talking about this quadrant. We are talking about this quadrant. So this quadrant, they are symmetric. You know, this uh, this part and this part, they are symmetric. When you say symmetric, when you say symmetric students, that means they are equal in shape in size, right? This is symmetric to these students. Okay, right? Is this clear, everyone? Fine. So this is symmetric to this, and this is symmetric to this. Can you see that? Is this clear, everyone? Odd function is clear to everyone? Fine. OK. All my students, let me know if the odd function clear. Right? So they are always symmetrical. Sometimes they don't mention. Right, they don't mention that it is it is a odd function. They can mention symmetrical about you know opposite quadrants. They will they will just write it in this way, first and fourth and second and fourth. Right, this is an odd function, students. Then we have the even function. Right. So students, even function means we are talking about something like f of minus x is always equal to fx. This is an even function, right? Okay, this is an even function. Right? f of minus x is my f of x. Fine, this is how it goes, right? Is this clear? Okay. So that means in this case is a very interesting one is cos of cos of x. You know, cos of x is what? Cos of minus x is always cos of x. This is always remember this. So cos x is nothing but it's an even function. Okay. It's a very important topic for J level. This is even function, right? So that means when you talk about this part, this is the origin. Right, this is the origin we are talking about, and this is nothing but what we are talking about. This, so right, can you see that? Fine, this is cos x. So cos x is always this is this is again symmetrical about y axis. This is symmetrical about y axis, right? This is symmetrical about y axis. Fine, this is how it goes. So this is the origin we are talking about, isn't it? So what we have. We have the symmetrical about y axis now. We are talking about this part. Can you see that? We are talking about this part, right? We are talking about this part. Okay. We are talking about this part. Okay. So this is how it goes. Fine. Right. So this and this are symmetrical. This is symmetrical to this, and this is symmetrical to this two is fine and you see that okay so that means hopefully you have understood this part right okay right everyone is this clear Fine. And the very interesting part is that every function, every function can be expressed as the sum of symmetric, I'm oh, sorry, sum of, you know, uh, let's not write symmetric, let's write uh, even function. An odd function, right? This is a very important property. Okay, this is how it goes. Fine. Right. So this is how it, we can write it, isn't it? So students, what we have? Every function can be. So this is this is uh, every function. When you talk about every function, what does it mean? It means that f x can be written as sum of an odd and an even function. That is what we're talking about. Right. 
So this is an even function and this is an odd function. Okay. So how it can be done, students? Let's understand. If I write fx, I can write fx as, you know, uh, can I write 1 by 2 into 2 fx? I can write it this way. I can. Okay. Half. I can write fx plus fx. I can write half f plus, you know, right. f of minus x, right, plus f minus of f minus x. Can you write in this way? Okay. Right, students? And I can write it as half f of f minus x, right, plus half of f minus of f of minus x, isn't it? This is how it can be. Okay. Right, everyone, is this clear? Fine. Any issues? Any problem? Fifth step is unclear. But uh, gx plus hx, it can be written as gx plus hx. fx is half of 2. We just multiply 2, 2. Then I, I've written fx as f plus f, 2f as f plus f. Then I've added f of minus x and I've subtracted f of minus x, right? So I have half of f plus f of minus x plus half of f minus f of minus x, fine? Right, Jagishan? So this is basically, if you substitute, you can see here, this is an even function and this is an odd function. Got it? Yes, students, let me know if this is okay, everyone. Fine? Every student, please confirm if this is okay, everyone. It's a very important part. You know, when you talk about J, uh, it, this always comes into picture. Everyone, let me know. If this is okay. Right. All my students, please confirm. Okay, great. Boom. Right, Sanjay? So what we have exactly proved? We have proved that this is an even function and this is an odd function. Right. Gx is half of f plus f of minus x, right, so much. So if I put in place of x, I write g of minus x, it becomes half of f of minus x plus half of minus of minus x, right? So this becomes how much? Half of fx plus f of minus x. So this is nothing but g of x, got it? So what does it mean? What does it mean? g of minus x is gx, so we can say that gx is always an even function. You got it so much? Similarly, we can prove this as an odd function. Okay? Yes, everyone, let me know. So much, is this clear? Yes, beta, let me know. So f of 2x is not f of 2x, 2 of fx added, not f of 2x. Don't get confused with f of 2x and 2 of fx, right? I have written 2 of fx. 2 of fx is written as f plus f minus x plus f minus f minus. I have added and subtracted this. And just, a, just a property, you know, it's just a property, okay? Every function can be expressed as a sum of even function and an odd function, okay? This is just a property we have, right, Sanjay? Right, Samaksh? Yes, let me know if this is okay, everyone. Fine. Yes, beta. Is this clear? Yes, Sanjay, this is fine. Section, everyone. Okay, All right. Now, you know, you have uh, different, different functions, different, different uh, types of questions where we need to, you know, check whether the function is even or odd, okay? That also very, very important. We need to understand that part, right? Yeah. 
Okay, right. So what we can do if I have uh, if I give you uh, say a function, right, and you have to identify whether the function is an odd function or an even function. You have to identify whether it is an even or odd function, right? So this is question number one. Fx is equal to log of x plus under root of 1 plus x squared, right? This is one question. Question number two, right? You have f of x is equal to x a raised to the power x plus 1 divided by a raised to the power x minus 1, okay? Question number three. If you can check it, right? f of x is equal to x plus cos x. Right, everyone? So can I have a look at it? Can you have a look at it? fx is log of x plus under root of 1 plus x squared. fx is x into a to the power x plus 1 divided by a to the power x minus 1. Question number 3. If you have sine x plus cos x, so how can you... How can you identify? Question three is now. Yes, absolutely, better. absolutely, students. Fine. So here, what we have, we can have a look at it. How to go about it? I mean, we need to understand whether it is an odd or even. So that means we are talking about f of minus x. You know, right? We can substitute. Is this clear? So we can write it as log of minus x plus under root of. 1 plus x squared, isn't it? This is what you can write, isn't it? So log of minus x plus under root of 1 plus x squared, fine. Log of under root of 1 plus x squared minus x, okay? Log of 1 plus x squared minus x, 1 plus x squared plus x, we rationalize it, right? We get 1 plus x squared, and this is plus x, okay? Right. Fine. So what I can write, I can write log of 1 plus x squared minus x squared, isn't it? Whole divided by under root of 1 plus x squared plus x, isn't it? So this is nothing but this is cancelled. So we have log 1 minus log of under root of 1 plus x squared plus x, right? Log 1 is 0, so it becomes minus of, you know, fx. Got it? So this is nothing but an odd function. Right, Anak? Right, Abhijit? Is this clear, everyone? Bhavil? Is this okay? Right. Ravisha? Sakshi? Fine, beta? So fourth step is not clear. But I have, I have just rationalized this. I have rationalized this. I need to make it a, you know, rationalized because I need to get it whether it is an odd or even, right? I mean, okay. Okay. So in this fashion, we can go into this part also. This is odd. You got it. So Sanjay, have you understood this concept? There's a property of log involved. Sanjay, have you done the log property written? Have you done the log properties, Sanjay? Okay, you need to you need to make a plan. Okay, you need to make a plan. You need to go through all the videos we have done, right? So initially we have done some basic videos, right? You need to go through it. Fine, beta. So maybe initially you may face some problem, but no no issues. You have time now. You can go through it. You can plan your day. You need to go through the videos, right? Okay, maths is a very very important subject, beta. You need to understand that part, right? Okay. We have f of x is equal to x into a to the power x plus 1 upon a to the power x minus 1. So I can write f of minus x. This is minus x, right? So this is a raised to the power minus x plus 1 divided by a raised to the power minus x minus 1, right? This is what you can write, is it? Fine. So this is minus x and I can write it as 1 upon a to the power x plus 1. This can be written as a to the power x minus 1. Right, or I can write it as minus x. This is one plus a to the power x divided by one minus a to the power x, isn't it? So this will be cancelled because a to the power x can be taken as a LCM. 
isn't it? Right. So this is minus of x a to the power x plus one. Again, I can write a to the power x minus one. This becomes plus. So this is nothing but f x, right, Bhavit? I think this is an even function, right? Right, Samaj? This is an even function, isn't it? But yeah, last step in this case is basically we are talking about log one is zero because I am using log m by n is equal to log m minus log n, right? Okay, everyone. So this is an even function, right? <laughs> so every student, please go through it once and let me know if it is okay. Fine. Not necessarily that every function is an odd or an even function. So your voice is not clear. Last step. Which one? The first question you are talking about? The first one? Obviously, log m by n is log m minus log n, right? So log 1 minus log of this. This is nothing but 0. So 0 minus this. So which is equal to minus of x. Right? So this is question number 3 we have. Okay? Question number 3, you know, not necessarily that function can be either it is even or odd or neither. You know? Okay, that is also very important. Sine of minus x plus cos of minus x, right? Which can be written as minus sine x plus cos x. So it doesn't make sense now. You can't write sine x minus cos x, right? This is what we have. Fine, we can't, isn't it? That is how it works. Okay. Right, everyone? Is this clear? Minus of sine x minus cos x ratio, right? So it is neither neither you know neither odd, okay, nor even. It is neither odd nor even students. Is this clear, everyone? Yeah, everyone. Whoever they're in the class, whoever they're in the class, please confirm. Right, Avisha? Great. Mithun, Sakshi, Samaksh, everyone. Great. Very nice. Fine. Okay, so this is this is a question which has been you know asked. Now let let's let's have a uh, uh, look at it. One more question. Let me see if you can, people can do it. Okay, right, Sanjay, is this okay? You understood a bit, right? Suppose you have been given f x is equal to. This is the question. Whether it is an odd or an even, you need to understand sign. Right, we have 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power minus x divided by 2 to the power x minus 2 to the power minus x. Right, this is what we have. Okay, this is how it goes. Fine. So fx is equal to sine 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power minus x upon 2 to the power x minus 2 to the power minus x. Right. Okay. So we need to check whether it is an odd function or an even function. That is my question. Need to check whether it is an even function or an odd function, right? Just do it. Come on, fast.
sine of 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power minus x upon 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power minus x. Right? Whether it is an odd or even function. Right, Sanjay? So much everyone. So much says it is an odd function. Sir. Great. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Fine. Right. Okay, it is an odd function. So same way, you know, we can write f of minus x. This is sine two raised to the power minus x, two raised to the power minus of minus x, right? 2 raised to the power minus x minus 2 raised to the power minus or minus x. Right? You can. <coughs> right? So is it an odd function, students? Is it an odd function? Yes, absolutely, Vita. Very nice, very nice. So all my students, let me know if it is okay. Odd, right? Okay, good. So sine of, we can write minus. This is 2 to the power minus x. 2 to the power minus x, right? Isn't it? So this is minus of fx, right? It's an odd function. So everyone, I suppose this question is clear to everyone. Okay. Right. So, you know, this is, this is what I have taken a very simple one. Let's understand this part, right? Okay. Okay. Now, students, uh, uh, this is one part, right? Yeah, by seeing this also, we can say, yes, absolutely, right? No, just I'm just trying to prove the, you know, algebraic thing which is involved here, right? This is what, fine. So, uh, now, uh, let me, let me come to a very again a difference. So I think this this odd and even part is clear. Odd and even part is clear, right? This is clear, fine. Okay. Now uh, before going to you know the odd odd function part, right? You know, sorry, uh, to the periodicity of the function, right? Let's understand one concept. It's a very important concept. That is the value of a function. The value of a function, right? Now, if fx is equal to sine x, so at x is equal to pi by 2, we have f of pi by 2 is equal to sine pi by 2, which is equal to 1, right? This is how it works. Fine. So, this is what? This is the value of the function, right? Okay, students, you understand? Right, everyone? Is this clear? If f of x is sine x at x equal to pi by 2, f of pi by 2 is equal to sine pi by 2, which is equal to 1. Right. At x is equal to pi, what will be f of pi? What will be f of pi? Yet x equal to pi, f of pi will be what? Sine pi is 0. Right. So this is how it goes, isn't it? Now, suppose you have been asked to find fx plus f of y. Suppose you have been asked to find f of x plus f of y. What does it mean? 
it means sin x plus sin y, right? This is how it goes, isn't it? Sin x plus sin y, right? Okay, right, everyone? Is this clear? Right. Now, students, if you have been asked, uh, suppose a question is given to you, very interesting one. Let's take this question. Very, very interesting, right? Now, if we have been given, suppose fx is equal to ln 1 minus x upon 1 plus x, right? This is what is given to us, right? You have to find the values of a and b if f of a plus f of b is equal to f of a plus b upon 1 plus a, isn't it? This is how it goes, fine. Right. So if f of x is ln, yes, absolute, absolute of it. So if ln a says, ln is 1 minus x upon 1 plus x, right? Yes. It's, Okay, so Ujwal, is there any problem, Peter? Is, is this clear to everyone? Fine, no issues? Okay. Now we have the, you have to find the values of A and B. A and B. If F of A plus F of B is equal to this, right? Now this is my question, everyone. Can you just have a look at it and can you try this one? Right. Yes. Let me know. Need to find the values of f of uh, you know you have been given. We have to find the values of a and b if f of a plus f of b is equal to f of a plus b upon one plus a b. Fine. This is what we have. Right. Right. Okay. So this is what is given to us. The, you know, you have been given the value of the function at a, b, and the value of the function at a plus b and 1 plus a, right? a, b upon 1. So we need to equate it. Right. Just have a look at it. How can you do it? Yes. Anything we can do? Right. So basically what we can do, we can just substitute the value as f of a. So this is ln 1 minus a upon. Mithun says, in ln is, is it minus 2? ln. So it, I think we use it in chemistry now, equivalent to 2.303 log, right? Right, we turn. Fine. Okay, let me come to this point now. If we say f of 
a this becomes 1 minus a upon 1 plus a, right is this clear meton f of b is what we have we have ln 1 minus b upon 1 plus b right this is how it goes so this is ln 1 minus a divided by 1 plus a into 1 minus b upon 1 plus b right this is how it goes isn't it and this is f of so this comes out to be ln we can just substitute the value right 1 minus a plus b upon 1 plus a b isn't it can you see that right divided by divided by what 1 plus this is what we done sorry f of this now so we have 1 minus 1 plus a plus b upon 1 plus a b right i think this is clear to everyone fine right okay we can just substitute the value right sakshi right ravisha i hope this is clear to everyone fine yes okay so this becomes ln 1 minus a this becomes 1 minus b right 1 plus a into 1 plus b fine this is how it can be done right and also this can be written as ln right it becomes 1 plus a b minus a minus b right divided by 1 plus a b plus a plus b a plus b right this is how it goes so this is equal to ln 1 plus a b minus a minus b upon 1 plus a b plus a plus b right this is how it goes why did you multiply so much this is log property now we have used the log right we have subtract we have multi you know this log plus this so we have added can you see that everyone so this part and this part this part both are same you know let's have a look at it now. so students just see this is 1 minus a 1 minus a minus b plus a b right divided by we have 1 plus a b so you have to be very patient about doing the sums now so you know both the sides you have the same thing that means it will because you know we need to understand the values now we need to check the domain also right we need to check the domain also that is also very very important so how can you check the domain so 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x right this is always greater than 0 or x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 is always less than 0 so this is nothing but minus 1 this is 1 we have fine so this is nothing but this is how it goes so minus 1 to 1 right so this is minus 1 to 1 we have right this is how it goes fine minus 1 to 1 we have okay right everyone Fine. So 1 minus x upon 1 plus x because the domain we need to find 1 minus x upon 1 plus x. So we get 1 minus x upon 1 plus x is greater than 0 to find the domain. So this is x minus 1 upon x plus 1, which is less than 0. Okay. Right, everyone? Is this clear? So this is the interval. No, I have not eliminated, I have not eliminated any a and b beta. We can't eliminate any a and b in this case because both the things are same. So that means the answer will be like, you know, whatever the values a comma b will be, it will be within the domain of this. So finally, the answer will be minus one comma one, actually. Right. Okay. A comma b is there, so this will be always minus one to one because the domain of x is this, and this is equal to this, right? So every values of a and b will belong to the domain of a comma b which belongs you know uh, that is uh, minus one to one right this is the 
logic actually. I have not eliminated. Let me again explain the sum. Okay. Fx is ln 1 minus x upon 1 plus x. F of a plus f of b is f of a plus b upon a plus 1 plus a b. So I have taken f a plus f b. Then I have written ln 1 minus a upon 1 plus b into 1 minus b upon 1 plus b. This is what we have. Is equal to ln. Right. 1 minus a plus b upon 1 plus a b. 1 plus a plus b upon 1 plus a b. So we can just simplify. So these are the two things we have. Right. One is this and one is this. So both are equal. Both are equal for a comma b belongs to minus 1 comma 1 because the domain is minus 1 comma 1. So basically the answer will be this. It will take the values between minus 1 and 1. Okay. Just, just you need to go through the question again. Right. It's basically both the, both the things are same. Okay. And we need to check the domain. So domain is basically x which lies between minus 1. So any values of a and b will satisfy this, <coughs> you know, this equation, right? So any other than uh, other than any value, minus 1 and 1, if it is less than minus 1, this will not, inequality will be not existing. This equality will be not existing. Only minus 1 and 1, the values between minus 1 and 1 will make this equality exist, right? So this is how it goes, fine? Okay. Right, everyone? Is this clear? Okay. Right. So uh, just just have a look at it. I have given you the question. Let me take the doubts now. Okay. So give me one minute. Let me bring the module. Just a minute. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me come to illustration 18. There's a doubt. Illustration 18. Okay. Illustration 18. Page number. Okay. I got it. Yes. Illustration 18 is basically we are talking about we need to find the period of sine x plus 10x by 2, right? This is what we have. Just have a look at it. Sine x upon 2 square plus 10x upon 2 cube sine x upon 2 to the power and minus 1, then x upon 2 to the power. So we need to find what? We need to find the period of the thing, right? Okay. Isn't it? So we know what is the sine, what is the period of sine ax plus b, right? Remember? This is nothing but 2 pi upon this. This is what we have. This is the period we are talking about, isn't it? So this is what? This is 2 pi. Okay. You got it? Fine. Is this clear? 
Now, when you talk about talk about this part, so this becomes how much? Two pi upon one upon two square, is it? Right. Fine. So this is the period. Actually, this this is what we have taught, right? This is the this is the property we have, right, Mithun? Similarly, we have two pi, right? So much one upon two raised to the power n minus one. So this is two pi comma two square into two pi comma right. 2 cube 2 to the power 4 sorry 2 to the power 4 again 2 pi can you see that this is what we have fine for sin x we are talking about isn't it and last one is 2 raised to the power 2n minus 1 into 2 pi fine so we need to find the LCM of this so the LCM will be what this will be the LCM 2 into 2 to the power 2n minus 1 into pi right or it can be written as 2 is it 2 raised to the power, sorry, n minus 1, no? yes, sir. n minus 1. So basically we have 2, 2 to cancel, so 2 to the power n into pi, right? Is this clear so much? Fine, because we need to find the LCM of that. Whenever you have been given the addition of functions, if you remember, I have given you the law f plus g, that means we need to find the LCM of this and this. Uh, I mean f plus g, so we need to find the LCM of the period of the two functions, right? Okay, right everyone, is this clear? This is illustration number 18 we are talking about, right? So what was a a1? a1 means what is a1? This one, this part. So whatever the this one we are talking a. No, this is whatever the whatever the you know numerical factor, numeric factor is associated with x that has to be divided now. This is the formula, right? Okay, got it. And you understand this part? You understand this part or not? Let me know. Then you need to find the LCM of 10x by 2. So for 10ax plus b, right, 10ax plus b, we have the period to be 2 pi upon, sorry, pi upon, this is what fine okay right everyone so for 10 you know for 10 we need to take now we 10 for 10 we have 1 upon 1 by 2 comma pi upon 1 upon 2 cube right pi upon you know because it goes like this and pi upon 1 upon 2 to the power n, right? 1 upon 2 to the power. Is this clear? LCM of this is 2 pi, 2 cube pi, 2 to the power n pi, right? This is how it goes. Fine. So this is also this is basically the LCM will be 2 to the power n pi. Is this clear? Yeah, if you have gone through the concept of periodicity, uh, periodicity, there we have discussed about this thing. If the functions are added, and we need to find the period of the added function, right? So we have to take the individual period. We have to find the LCM of this. Two to the power n into pi. This is LCM. Here. Okay. This is how it goes. Fine.
Right, everyone? Is this clear? Okay. Yes, Pavel, everyone, please confirm. If this is okay, students, let me know. Yes. I think Arun, you have joined today, so maybe you have any, you may have some problems with her. I can understand. But you need to go through the videos, then you have to come to the class, then you'll find it much, much more interesting, right? Okay, so everyone, please confirm if this is okay. But actually, what happens, Prajit? It's basically we talk about period of sine x, anag, 10x by 2, sine x by 2 square, you know, 10x by 2 cube, sine x. So these are the functions which are given to us. So, first of all, we, we know what is the period of sine a x plus b. This is always 2 pi upon mod. So, first of all, we find sine x sine all the sine you know all the sine all the period of the sine functions we have been given so we have got this part so this is basically 2 raised to the power n pi we have similarly we go for the 10 part that is pi upon half pi upon 1 by 2 cube dot dot pi upon 1 by 2 to the power n but lcm is 2 pi 2 cube pi dot dot 2 to the power n pi which is nothing but 2 to the power n pi right this is how it goes fine okay <laughs> Right, Aprajit? Now, if you, you know, this is what we have. So 2 to the power n pi, 2 to the power. So LCM of this and this also, the final final will be 2 to the power n pi because we need to take all the LCM, all the all the part, right? So basically, this sine x to it to the power n pi for 10x also 2 to the power n pi. So LCM of 2 to the power n pi, 2 to the power n pi is 2 to the power n pi, right? This is how it goes. Fine. Okay. Right, everyone. Is this clear, Brajit? No? Fine. Shall I shall I go to the next doubt? Have we written it? Illustration four and five, is it? Four and five. Four, five. Yes, Bhavil, you have question number four, right? Question number four. Question number four. Illustration four, right, Bhavil? Is it? Illustration four, Bhavil? Four and five. Okay. So uh, again, it's a it's a it's a very simple question. You have been given fx is equal to sine of under root of greatest integer lambda x is a periodic function with period pi right then you have to find the lambda Right, everyone? You need to find lambda. Right? So how do you find lambda? It is a periodic function. So it's a very interesting one that you need to find, you know, the value of lambda. Right. So as I told you, sine of Ax plus B, the period is 2 pi upon, this is what we have, fine. So that means the period of this is 2 pi divided by mod of, you know, under root of lambda, isn't it? This is what, which is equal to pi, right? This is how it goes, fine. This is cancelled. So 2 is equal to under root of lambda. So lambda is equal to how much, you know? So this is greatest integer, sorry. So if I square it, it becomes 4. 
isn't it? So when you say this is equal to four, what are the values of lambda when it will be four? Either it will be four or it will be the values which is less than five, right? You understood, right? Right, everyone, is this clear? Okay, illustration four is clear. Right. Click. So illustration. 16, page 47. Illustration 16, right? Page 47. We have fx is equal to log base e. We need to find the range in this case, right? So whenever we talk about range, you know, as I told you in the video also, we need to first of all, Find the domain, you know, that is also very important. So when you talk about domain, so 3x square minus 5, 4x plus 5 is always greater than 0. Okay, this is how it goes. Fine. Is it? Can you see that? So what can be the domain? D is 16 minus 4 into 3 into 5. So this is 16 minus you know, 60, which is minus 44, which is less than zero, right? D is less than zero. That means X belongs to R, right? This is how it goes, fine? Right? This is how it goes, okay? So domain is what? Real number? The domain is the real number? How is 16? Aditya, how it is 16? Beta, uh, B square minus 4 is enough. Right, Aditya? Okay. D less than 0. So D less than 0 and X belongs to R. So domain is what? Domain is R. Right. Now let's come to the range part. We can take y. No, no, we are, we are, see, basically, we are talking about the values of x, which will make this function satisfied, right? That is what, you understand? We are not talking about the roots. Got my point? We are talking about the values of x, which will make it, which will make it defined. You understood? So there was a question, sir. Uh, there was a question that how to find the domain and if if at d is less than zero, how can it be, you know, how can it be real? I'm talking about a function. I'm talking about a function, right? Where if I substitute the values of x, whether this value will give you a positive term or not. You understood? That is what we are talking about, is it? That is what we are talking about. We need to substitute the value of x, right, so much here, so that this function is satisfied, right? I'm not talking about the values of x, which will be satisfying. I'm not talking about the roots. Is this clear, Mitun? Right, everyone? Okay. So what we can do, we can write y is equal to log base e, this is 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Isn't it? This is how it goes. So this is e to the power y is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay. Then we have 3x squared. This is minus 4x plus 5 minus e to the power y is equal to 0. Fine. This is how it goes. Okay. 
Now we have to write in terms, you know, y x in terms of y. So what is x? X is four plus minus, you know, b square sixteen minus four into three into five, right? Five minus e to the power y, isn't it? This is it. divided by two into three, isn't it? This is how it goes. Fine, right, everyone? So x is equal to how much? We have four. This is plus minus sixteen minus twelve sixty, right? Plus four e to the power y, twelve e to the power y, six, right? You are neglecting the negative part of the equation. Which one? I have not taken any negative part, beta. I have not taken any negative part here. I am just doing as it is what have been done. D is less than zero. Yes, any negative, any value, x is equal to minus one, minus two. Three, four, anything you substitute, this will be always greater than zero. You understood? Okay, my turn. Right, and this is we have how much? Minus forty-four plus twelve minus e to the power y. Oh, sorry, twelve e to the power. Right. Hey. This is what we have, is it? Okay. Now it's okay or not? Let me let me first of all let me make it clear now. Is this? Let me clear. Make it clear. Yes, students. Let me know. This is okay. Now, if x is real, student, so this part, this part, will be always greater than equal to zero, is it? Fine. Sixteen minus sixty plus twelve e to the power y is greater than equal to zero. So this is minus forty-four plus twelve e to the power y is greater than equal to zero. So we have twelve e to the power y, right? Is greater than equal to how much? Is forty-four, right? But e to the power y is greater than equal to forty-four upon twelve. E to the power y is greater than equal to eleven by three. Okay. Okay. So when you remove, you know, remove the base, we get log base e eleven upon three. So the range will be in this case, right? This was the question. Whose question was this? Log base e, eleven upon thirteen. Yes. Now the concept is clear, right? Yes. Everyone, whoever not understood this question, let me know. So, of log of a negative number is undefined, so not log remains undefined for an expression re returning a negative. Absolutely, beta. If it is giving a negative value, it cannot be. Right? Yes. Everyone, please confirm. Yes. Let me know. I guess this applies to the function containing natural logs whose arguments argument return to a negative value. I mean, whatever the values, you know, I substitute the values of x. You know, we substitute the values of x, right? And always we get a positive value, right? This is this is a simple statement we have. Okay, everyone, is this clear? Okay. Any other doubts you have? Okay, note it down. No problem.
So illustration 21, can we discuss 21? Okay. Right? Okay. Written, everyone? Fine. Okay. Now we have a question from illustration 21. We have been given fx is equal to a raised to the power sine square x plus sine square x plus pi upon 3 plus cos x into cos of x plus pi by 3. The period of fx. period of fx is 1. Okay. So that means we need to simplify the things. Sine square x plus sine square x. We need to, which are, can, we, can we just make it more, you know, uh, simplified. Right. Let's, let's make it more simplified. So basically, sine square x is okay. This period we know. This period we need to find. This period we need to find, right? So this is sine to the power n. I think it's right. I think this this can be done, fine, right? But what about this part? So that is a very different. So what we can do, we can just simplify this. Sine square x can be written as one minus cos two x divided by two. This can be written as one minus cos two into x plus pi by 3 divided by 2, right? Then we have 2 cos x, cos x plus pi by 3 divided by 2 we have, okay? So we can write 1 by 2, 1 by 2 cos 2 x, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 cos x plus 2 pi by 3, right? This is how it goes, fine. And this can be written as cos x plus x plus pi by 3, right? Plus cos x minus x minus pi by 3 divided by 2, right? Fine. So one by two, one by two. We can we can just take the things. Uh, I think we can do it in this way. We can just take the things common and we can just solve it, right? Doesn't it? We can take two x here. Fine. I hope this is clear to everyone, right? So one by two, one by two. It is one minus of half, right? It becomes cos two x half. We have cos 2x plus 2 pi by 3, right? Then we have cos 2x plus pi by 3, isn't it? Divided by 2, right? We have cos, you know, minus pi by 3. So cos of minus pi by 3 is cos pi by 3. So cos pi by 3 is what? Cos 60. All right. Let me let me give you an idea, then things will be okay then. Right. This is what we have. So this will be half. Basically, what we have done, we have used this formula. I think Abhi, you can just try this question now. Sine square x can be written as 1 minus cos 2x divided by 2. Right. This is how it goes. Fine. So sine square x is 1 minus cos 2x, right, divided by 2. Fine. Okay, this is how it goes. Okay, now, you know, can you see the illustration? So we are getting a, come out, coming with a, you know, 
five by four. I mean, the calculation is coming as five by four. So ultimately, we are having f x is equal to a to the power five by four. So this is a constant. So for constant, there is no. It's it's a periodic function, but there is no fundamental period. There is no fundamental period which is defined. No fundamental periods. We can't define a fundamental period. You got it? Because f x is a constant. That means if I take f f x is equal to two, suppose, right? Right. So this is two. Right. You know what? Basically, we need to take. We need to take f of x plus t is equal to f x. Right. This is this is the property of a periodic function. Okay. So two plus t is equal to two. So t is equal to zero. We don't define any. We can't have any value in this case. Okay. We can't have. So there is no fundamental fundamental period which is involved here. Okay. We can't say anything. Right, Tavi? Is this clear, everyone? So illustration thirty four last step last step but this is a constant you do the calculation you will get a constant here right so f x is a constant that means f x is a constant means we are talking about f x is equal to k which is a constant function this is a constant function we have right constant function means we are talking about a constant which is we are talking about a number f x is equal to t which is a line. Which parallel to x-axis, right? Which is parallel to x-axis, isn't it? So we don't have any fundamental period defined for that, right? Okay, everyone. Okay. Next we have thirty four. Thirty four. Page number fifty four. Mitun has a doubt. Page number thirty four. Can you have the module? You have the module with you. Yes. We have illustration thirty four. We need to check whether it is one one or many one. This is a very interesting part, right? So let's take one by one. Which of the function is one one or many one? I think let's take the first part. So there's a there's a limit involved. I think the limit uh, part we can just avoid. Let me go to the the because all the questions you know we need to draw the graph, Mitun. So there is a calculus involved. I think that limit part we'll do later on. Okay, so we no no need of doing this part part actually, right? Okay, because uh, this is given in this module, but we need to understand the calculus part also. The calculus is also there, so. I think uh, we we'll later on we'll do that. Fine. So remember this. Whenever we will do calculus, we'll do that. Okay. Nothing to worry. Fine. I'm because I need to discuss the whole calculus part, time. limits and everything. Okay. Okay. Any other doubts you have? Yes. Abhi. So subdivision four can be done. Acha. There is a fourth. Fourth part, which is given. Okay, so let's have a look at it. If we can do it, e raised to the power mod of x, right? Plus e raised to the power minus x. Okay, e to the power minus x plus e to the power x. Fine. So y is equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x. Whole divided by e to the power minus x plus e to the power x y when x is greater than or equal to zero, right? This is how it goes, right? Because we know that mod of x is always equal to 
you know, x when x is greater than or equal to 0, minus x when x is less than 0. Fine. This is how it works. Okay. Right. This is one part. Y is equal to, we have e to the power minus x plus e to the power minus half. You know, already minus x is given. And this is e to the power minus x plus e to the power x when is x is less than zero, right? This is how it goes, fine. So there are two things. Can you see that? Can you see that, Mithun? Is this fine? So we have y is equal to one, right? When x is greater than equal to zero, fine. And also we have y is equal to twice of e to the power minus x divided by 1 upon e to the power x plus e to the power x, isn't it? For x less than 0, which is twice of e to the power minus x upon 1 plus e to the power 2x divided by e to the power x. Or I can write it as twice e to the power minus x into e to the power x divided by 1 plus e to the power 2x, right? So twice upon 1 plus e to the power twice x, fine. Okay, this is how it goes. When x is less than 0. So we have y is equal to, you know, 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. We have twice of 1 plus e to the power 2x when x is less than 0. Okay. So that means, that means what? So there are two functions which are involved. See, it cannot be 1, 1 because, you know, why it is not 1, 1 meter because if I put x is equal to, you know, for x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, right? Is it? Okay. For x is equal to 1, this is again giving y is equal to 1. If x is equal to 2, y is given as, again, it is giving 1. Can you see that? So for 1, 0, 1, 2, everything, we get the same 1, right? Can you see that? So that is why it is not an 1-1 one, one function. It is a, it is a many-1 function. You understand? Right, everyone? Is this clear? Yes. Just have a look at it. Let me know if the things are okay. Fine, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Last step, last step is basically, you know, we get this part, right? So we know that one one function is different elements have different images, isn't it? So for x is equal to zero, this we have one. Of x is equal to one, we have one. We have x is equal to two, we have one. So for every zero, one, two, we have the same image, right? Zero, one, two, we have the same image, isn't it? Can you see that? So that means we are talking about a function which is, which is, what? Which is many one, not one. Right, so much? Okay. Yes. Is this clear, everyone? Is this fine? Algorithm, uh, you know, anti log is basically uh, okay. Uh, something about it. you know, I don't have the table with me now, but I will exp I will just tell you how to you know use that part. So when you use log, 
right? When you say log, so there's an anti log also. Okay, just let me let me just explain this again. Let me explain the things to Abhi, and then we'll come to your doubt. Okay, when you talk about anti log, what does it mean? We have suppose log of you know, say. I have x is equal to right one upon three. So no, let me take a very simple one. X is equal to say three to the power twenty nine. We have to find right, right, sir. So, okay. So what we take? We take log on both sides. Fine. Can you see that? Three to the power twenty nine. Okay. Or I can take log of x is twenty nine log three. So we have a table, Abhi. Well, log three is known to us. I think it's zero point three zero or two point whatever, right? Okay, right, Abhi. So what we take this is this we use a logarithm table actually. We use a logarithm table. Fine. Now when you find the anti log, so we take anti log of log of x is equal to anti log of right. Twenty-nine into whatever you know the value we get, right? You got it. So anti log of log will be again become x, and whatever the value we get, that is the answer, right? Abhi. So anti log table is also there. There's an anti log table also you need to find, right? So both the table will be given. There are two tables. One is log table, and in one is anti log table, right? So everyone, is this clear? Right, yeah. Log three is you no know, zero point four seven. Yes, absolutely. Very good, Mitran. So we can multiply. Then we take anti log on both sides. So anti anti gets cancelled. Anti log and log cancel. So it becomes x. <coughs> this is what we have. Fine. So this is what we can, you know, incorporate on this. Fine, everyone. Illustration thirty-eight. You know, this is again uh, okay. Let me tell you that illustration thirty-eight, right? So, illustration thirty-eight, we are talking about, you know, because again, it's a very important thing. We need to understand that part also. We need to, you know, find. The area enclosed by y is equal to x plus sine x, and y is equal to x plus sine x. Right. The inverse of this. Basically, we are talking about the inverse of this. Right. Okay. So, how to draw this graph? This is again a very interesting graph we have. Okay. So, whenever we have x plus sine x. We have plus function, so x plus sine x. So sine x is a function which lies between minus one and one, right? So what we can do, we can add, you know, we can add x to x plus sine x, x to both sides, no? X plus one, right? Can you see that? We have added. Understood? Got my point. So this x plus sine x, you know, it lies between x minus one and x plus one. This is again a very interesting part we have, right? Okay. So we have y is equal to x minus one. We have y is equal to x plus one, right? Okay. 
So one line is this. This is one line. Fine. This graph we need to understand. This is what we have. Fine. Now one line is this. Can you see that? Okay. So basically the graph lies between this line and this line. That is what the logic is. Okay. Right, students. So this is this is the thing we are talking about, isn't it? So graph basically of this, you know, because it lies between this and this. So now, if I put x is equal to zero, say we put x is equal to zero. So y is equal to what? Zero plus sine zero. Which is sine zero, which is equal to zero, right? This is again, it's a it's a thing that graph passes through zero comma zero. That's fine. Okay, I think this is clear, right? So much. If I put x is equal to pi by two, or we can write it as three point one four divided by two. This is one point five seven. Then we have sine pi by two. Right, which is nothing but one. So one plus one point five seven, because this is zero comma one, and this is one comma zero. Have you understood what I have written here? So much. You understood? Is this clear? Whenever there is a function, we need to find the draw the graph of that. We we need to check the. Maximum or the minimum value of the function which is there in the graph. So y is equal to x plus sine x. Okay, right, everyone. So one point five. This comes out to be two point five seven. Okay, right, everyone. I hope this is clear. Okay, so graph will be, you know, my dear students, graph will be something like this, you know. It will be like this, right? So always remember that whenever we say. A inverse of a function, it means it is always symmetrical about y-axis. Yeah, you know, line. Sorry, symmetrical about the line y is equal to x. Y is equal to x, right? So that means if we have a curve like this, right? Suppose this is, you know, we have f x, right? So the inverse will be. You know the image. So this is basically we are talking about the f inverse x part, right? You understand? Is this clear, everyone? Right. Always. So basically, line y is equal to x. You know. Act as a mirror. This is a mirror, right? This is a mirror we are talking, about, right? Why? This is x. This is x dash, right? This is y dash, right? This is what we have. Fine. Is two point. Is this clear, everyone? Is this fine? You understood? Yes. Let me know, Mithun, and everyone, because I want everyone to go through this. I know people might have not gone gone through the videos and gone, we have not done the problems, but it's okay. I mean, we need to understand the things. Fine. That is very important. 
right on that? Great, my turn. Yes, so much. Sir, but why does it include integration? Again, this is a this is a concept we need to understand. You know, uh, integration is a yeah, then area basically. Yeah, we need to find the area of this, right? This is what you have, isn't it? We need to find the area of this. So these are all symmetrical actually. So if you can find one area, the other area can be found. So how it is found, let me just have a look at it because I don't want you to do the integration part, but understand this part. Actually what happens, y is equal to x is here, right? Yeah, so you know, this is symmetrical. So if you can part find one, so basically we have, this is pi. So zero to pi, zero to pi y is equal to x. So this is y is equal to x, this is, you know, x plus sine. Fine. Okay. So basically we need to find the area of this. So what we take, we take the integration of zero to pi, this is the limits and the upper function, you know, this is, this is what we have, right? X minus of X minus of X, sorry, X plus sine X, right? We need to find this value. So this will be always positive, right? This is again very important, fine? So uh, this is integration part, we need to do it later. Okay, students, is this clear everyone? Fine. Why integration? Integration is used to find the area. You know, the basic concept, basic motto or basic function of integration is, is need to find the area under a curve, right? Definite integral is used. This is called a definite integral. Whenever you have been given an integration, you have been given a, you know, limits. So the limits are there. So we need to, this is basically the area we are talking about, right? Just write it down, come on, no problem. So what is the principle behind differentiation? Differentiation, the basic geometrical interpretation is you need to find the slope of a tangent to the curve, right? That is what we have. It's basically, you know, it's change in y divided by change in x. So basically, we are talking about the slope, limiting value of the slope of the tangent, right? To the curve. Okay, this is what we have. Geometrically, this is the concept in one. Fine. Why is, no, no, it's, it's, why is equal to x? Because whatever the points are there now, you'll get an image on that. This has been proved actually, right? Because, you know, why it is so, because in, you know, when you talk about the inverse function, you know, always remember, you know, the, it's something like this. Everyone is connected to each other, isn't it? That is what the inverse function is. Like. If you have a function a to b, f is a function from a to b, right? So f is a function from a to b, then f inverse is a function from b to a, right? This is how it goes, fine? Right, everyone, is this clear? Okay.
All right. Any other doubts you have, students? Why did you use the value of the two? No, no, that I meant, you know, pi by two was there, right? So somewhat maybe here, because at pi it is intersecting, right? So this is pi, fine. Pi is 3.14, isn't it? Okay, so for pi by two, we'll be getting somewhere here. Okay, this is 2.57, is this clear? Now is it fine? Right so much? So you can draw the graph in this way. You can get the values of x and you know, accordingly we can act, right? No, no, I'm not talking about the area. I'm just drawing the graph first. I'm drawing the graph first. They've asked for the graph, you know, up to two pi, right? up to 2 pi. They are asking the graph between, you know, enclosed between the graph of fx and f inverse. Please understand, we are talking about this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, right? They are asking for a graph of this. This is the graph they want. You understand? So they are, you know, so this is basically one function. So this is the inverse of this, right? This part is the inverse of the Below function, isn't it? Okay. I hope this is clear to everyone. Fine. Any other doubts, Peter? Any other doubts? Any one of you? We have one more class next week for functions, right? Then I think we'll, we'll be starting with the permutation and combination in the next set of videos, okay? Next class also we are having function. So I think uh, we have done a lot many problems in function in this uh, week also, the videos which will be publishing, right? We'll have, you know, uh, different, different types of functions. So you see every video whatever has been uploaded just make sure that i'm just trying to you know uh, you know uh, uh, the boundary right is the is the differentiation there differentiation but the differentiation will do later on we'll start you know after maybe four or five chapters permutation combination you have you have binomial theorem you have straight lines you have circles you have uh, conic sections then you have differentiation okay Right. So we move, we need more graphs of transformations in one. Yes, Mahesh, we need we need to first of all. First of all, you know, we'll discuss maybe next class in the in the class we'll discuss some graphs also, right? So you can go through more transformation. Huh? Uh, we'll discuss a few more graphs. I think that is also needed. So we can discuss it in the class, not in the videos. Okay. So videos I've given the basic general uh, basic graphs where you know, it's very important to know what are the techniques. So all of the transformations, there are a lot many transformations, right? So I've discussed uh, you know eight or ten transformations. I think you should go through it. And that will give you a, a, you know, idea to go about, uh, you know, to the other transformations also. Okay. Right, everyone. Is this clear?
Yes. Mitun, any other doubts? Mahesh? Yes, Vita, let me know if it is okay, everyone. Mahesh, Himank, Aprajit, Anag, Ravisha, yes, Aditya, Bhavil. Yes, Vita, let me know. Samaj, Mitun. Right, so is this okay now? Fine. So we have discussed a lot many things today, right? So next uh, week we are having a function test. So you just revise for domain range. So any 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 uh, you know feedback or anything you want to give uh, in my video part is videos are going right. I mean you need anything else or you need some improvement in the videos? Can you just give me some feedback? I mean that will be very nice if I can have something. Is the video okay? You are getting the things done. I mean clear. Fine. I, I'm giving you some questions based on advanced and mains level also this time, right? So that was the feedback I got. Anything you want to give, we can. So that we can work upon. Okay. So you, uh, I'm starting from the basics, right? So hopefully things are clear to you, everyone. Yes, let me know any feedback so that, you know, we can work on, right? Anything you want to. Okay, that's no problem, no problem, Bhavi. Anything else? So I think uh, that many times there's a problem of repetition. Problem problem is repeated. Repetition of videos. Acha, problem video has been repeated. There's a technical problem there, right? Okay. Anything else? We need to check it out. We we'll need to check it, right? So only one video demo is here. So you need to you need to one one two three more. I mean you want to discuss that. Acha, the only demo is here is repeated. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, yes, that's that's true. That's maybe maybe that has been repeated. No issues. Okay. Anything else? Samaj? No feedback. Nothing. Nothing else. Yes, we need to do self practice. Yes. So far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Leave. What leave? What leave? Mic, you want mic for what? Yes, I've given you, I've given you the access. I think we should talk now. Good evening, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, Mr. Tell me. Sir, I was saying that uh, since your videos are covering uh, each and every variety of the questions, so can we uh, leave doing practice? Like uh, we can just make the videos thorough. Mike is. Mike is not audible. Is there any problem sir, related thing? Actually, there's a mic problem, so I will just check it out. Right. So if you have anything to be asked, so can you ask me in the group then? Fine. No, no, actually, I don't. Mike is not working in this case, so I need to check it out. Okay, I will just check. So, much if there is no problem, then you can ask me in the group or you can send me a voice message. Is this okay? Fine, so that I can just check it out. 
राइट ओके समाज ओके यू आई वॉज सेंग दैट सिंस योर वीडियोज कवर्स ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन बेटा यस 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 सेल्फ प्रैक्टिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यार वी नीड टू हैव अल्फ प्रैक्टिस सेल यू नीड टू प्रैक्टिस इट है ओके 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 जस्ट गो थ्रू द वीडियोज ओके anything you want to ask anything you can message me on the group so this is the thing we can always discuss fine chal with this i end up the session okay so hopefully you have all have understood the concepts everything so bye beta take care and god bless you bye okay